Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to another excellent episode of Daybreak. I'm your host, Nick Tomarello. And I'm your host, Taylor Spirito. On today's episode, we will be honoring Black History Month with an exclusive interview with the Vice President of Point Park's Black Student Union. But first, this morning's top stories start with record-breaking details on the recent polar vortex that hit our area. And we have all you need to know in sports, tech, and entertainment including an in-depth discussion on recent alleged celebrity sexual assault cases on Breaking It Down with Brie. Wake up and smell the coffee, Pittsburgh, because Daybreak starts now. words for you Nick. What crazy weather. I know that's right Taylor. Extremely cold temperatures hit us hard last week and now we're dealing with unseasonably warm temperatures and not to mention all of this rain. Those extremely cold temperatures you mentioned resulted in Point Park being one of several universities at, on this side of the United States to cancel classes on Wednesday and Thursday of last week. The negative degree weather and an even colder wind chill has been deemed a polar vortex. While the polar vortex was mainly affecting the Midwest, with Chicago being under a wind chill advisory, Pennsylvania experienced a heavy blast of cold from the storm. Pittsburgh's temperature clocked in at 8 degrees, and that was the high according to AccuWeather. Winds hit up to 20 miles per hour in the Steel City. Americans caught in the path of, of the storm excuse me, were advised not to breathe heavily or talk while outside. This extreme cold prompted Point Park to close for the for the two days, including canceling classes. According to an email sent out by Dean Palo, the university's dean of students, quote, during this time of colder than normal temperatures, please use caution and dress appropriately. As in all weather related events, students should use caution and best judgment to protect their health and safety, end quote. Other schools around the area that were closed included Slippery Rock University, CCAC, Pitt, and Duquesne University. Yeah, Taylor, I know last week we had those two um, days that were closed, and it was very late whenever they actually said that the campus would be closed. Everyone was expecting, you know, to, for them to send out that alert a lot earlier. Right, and most schools around the area did send out that al alert a lot earlier, even some schools canceling on Thursday on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So I know that we got the email at around 6 o'clock the next morning, and then by mid-afternoon they canceled class for that Thursday. Yeah. So definitely was expecting them to cancel class a little bit earlier, but we still got classes canceled. <laughs> but to talk more about weather, we're going to send it over to Colton Tobias, who's making his Daybreak debut. Thank you so much, Taylor and Nick. Now, now you were right, Taylor, with all of that crazy weather hitting Pittsburgh and the general northeast area um, last week. Now, those temperatures did did rise up till into surprisingly uh, uh, around the early um, 50s and even the um, early 60s, as we saw on Thursday. But after some uh, rain on Thursday night and some and some pretty bad wind chills on Friday, we should um, we should expect the sun to be back out once again. But the bad news is that that we are going to see a high of 27 and a low of 15. So you will have to make sure to to um, bring your jackets out, your topsail caps and your scarves because it will get cold once again. Now on Sunday, we should see some um, snow around the mid afternoon. Now, now, as you can see, those temperatures are going to rise back up to a high of 37 and a low of 25, but still it is going to be very cold and not to mention it is the, and it is going to snow. And also on Monday, we are going, we are going to see some cloudy skies all throughout Pittsburgh with, with a high of 36 and a low of 28. And also for the rest of the week, we are going to see some mix of snow, of snow, some sunshine and some wind and clouds, but still it is going to be pretty cold out. So hopefully Punxsutawney's excuse me, Punxsutawney's Phil's prediction of a early spring isn't going to happen this week, but let's hope it will happen 
in the near future. That is all for, for weather. Um, Taylor and Nick, back to you. Thanks so much, Colton. Yeah, Punxsutawney Phil did predict an early spring. Let's hope that that happens. I mean, as we've talked before, we're both not the biggest fans of this weather. No. You more the wind chill, me more the snow. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as you can see, the weather's kind of been dipping in and out there. So who knows what's going to happen? It's classic Pennsylvania. Yeah, I have a prediction, though, that Punxsutawney Phil's entire prediction had to be based around this upcoming weather or the weather on the day <laughs> that it happened. I'm hoping that we get this early spring, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to work out or not. But I've been enjoying this warm weather for um, these past you know, couple days. A little bit of rain, but that's okay. That's normal Pittsburgh weather. Exactly. But coming up next, here is your city and campus news. A federal grand jury charged Robert Bowers, the alleged shooter at the Tree of Life Synagogue, in a new indictment last Tuesday. Bowers was originally charged with 44 different criminal counts on October 31st of last year, four days after the shooting. According to a press release from the United States Department of Justice, Bowers was charged with 19 new counts related to hate crimes and firearm offenses. The indictment specifically alleges that Bowers entered the synagogue armed with multiple firearms, including three Glock 357 handguns and a Colt AR-15 rifle. The indictment also alleges that Bowers posted statements on Gab.com, a free speech alternative to Twitter used by most far-right and anti-Semitic users. Bowers was quoted as posting, Jews are the children of Satan. The Justice, excuse me, the Justice Department plans to seek the death penalty for Bowers. And on Tuesday night, two survivors of the Tree of Life shooting attended the State of the Union as guests of President Trump. Police officer Timothy Matson was shot seven times chasing Bowers and had just had his 12th surgery before traveling to Washington, D.C. Also survivor Judah Samet, who arrived just four minutes late to the synagogue saving his life, attended the State of the Union and even received birthday wishes as the entire room sang to him. Not only did Samet survive the shooting, but he is also a survivor of Nazi concentration camps. Happy 81st birthday to you, Mr. Samet. A recent Point Park grad has been accepted into the Disney Professional Internships Program. Miranda Peel was part of the Disney College Program from 2016 to 2017, and upon her graduation from the Sports, Arts, and Entertainment Program in December of 2018, she applied. According to her profile on pointpark.edu, she says, quote, I never thought I would get accepted into the program. Compared to working the college program, a process designed for college students to work out inside of the parks assisting guests, Peel will be working more behind the scenes with the guest experiences, experience excuse me, services at Team Disney. In addition to the difference of work she will be doing, Peel says that the professional internships program is far more competitive than the college program. In her profile on pointpark.edu, she says, quote, only one to three percent of applicants get accepted, end quote. From everyone here at Daybreak and UView, we wish Miranda the best of luck continuing to spread that Disney magic. Pittsburgh has been rated the fourth best small city to live and work as a movie maker in 2019 by Movie Maker Magazine. The publication references the Pittsburgh Film Office now in its 29th year of operation after opening in 1990. The Film Office recently welcomed the Netflix show Mindhunter and the new Mr. Rogers movie A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood starring Tom Hanks, which began filming in the fall. Don Keezer, the director of P the Pittsburgh Film Office, told Movie Maker, quote, We've consistently been growing our crew base while increasing the amount of productions that choose to work in our region. The area is also affordable and is consistently ranked on every top 10 list imaginable. Whether it's the best places to live, the best places to start a business, the best places to raise children, or the best places to dine. The city has welcomed many great actors like Viola Davis and Denzel Washington in the Oscar-nominated film Fences. Tom Cruise and Jack Reacher, Will Smith in Concussion, and of course Christian Bale's Batman in The Dark Knight Rises. The city also played home to many book-to-film movies like The Fault in Our Stars, Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl, and The Perks of Being a Wallflower. 
And finally, for those of you excited to see a beautiful day in the neighborhood, it is expected to release on October 19th. In recent Point Park Campus news, Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea made its stage adaption premiere at the Pittsburgh Playhouse on February 1st. The Pulitzer Prize winning novel was published in 1952 and received a film adaptation in 1958. According to the alternate press, Hemingway's good friend A.E. Hotchner accompanied the author to see the film adaption. Hemingway then asked Hotchner to make his own rendition of the story one day. Hotchner, now 101 years old, has kept his promise to his friends by, to his friend, excuse me, by bringing the story to the stage. AP News reports that it took Hotchner about 10 years in quote becoming an old man himself and quote to understand the message of the story. Point Park's Conservatory of Performing Arts students are working hand in hand with the professionals involved in the show, including Tony Award winning actors and live musical performers. According to the alternate press, it only took six months to bring the production to life, and that's thanks to collaborating with New York City-based RWS Entertainment Group, whose CEO, Ryan Stana, is a Point Park alumni. The Old Man in the Sea will run in the Pittsburgh Playhouse until February 17th. Pittsburgh police closed the case on Monday, releasing new details on the death of 21-year-old Duquesne football player Marquise Jalen Brown. According to a press release from the Pittsburgh Department of Public Safety, Duquesne University police and campus security officers responded after receiving calls of Brown acting erratic in the elevator and in the hallway of his 16th floor dorm room. The officers entered his room minutes after the call, under the assumption that Brown and his roommate were fighting. The responding officers discovered that the roommate was just trying to calm down Brown. Soon after the officers arrived, Brown threw a chair and broke his window and then jumped out. The university police called emergency medical services and Pittsburgh police were called to the scene. The release also states that Brown had marijuana in his system at the time and that witnesses said there was no physical interaction or confrontation between the police and Brown in his dorm room. Duquesne University released a statement the same day saying, quote, the community is deeply saddened by the tragedy that occurred on campus Thursday, October 4th. The university's focus remains on fostering support and healing among the students, faculty, and staff affected by this tragedy. Counseling services are still available to the Duquesne community, and the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is open 24-7 and can be reached by calling 1-800-273-8255. I love how Duquesne is still offering support for those that have been affected by this, but I also want to talk real quick about uh, the story that you did on Pittsburgh being rated among the best places to film. I, knew, I know that I saw Tom Hanks when he was in town at uh, Mandarin Gourmet. I missed him. Did you? I think I was the only person that missed Tom Hanks. If I mean, I'm sure a lot of my friends, they had pictures and videos of him on I had Snapchat. One. Yeah. You got a picture of him. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I did, though, whenever I went to Mandarin Gourmet, um, I think it was like a week or two after that, I got to sit in the same seat that he was at. Ooh. So even though I didn't get to see him, you know. You live vicariously through his booth. I do. I do. Yeah, it was really cool to see him. I know that he waved to a few of my friends. He was just very uh, courteous to everyone that was, you know, seeing him waving hi. And, you know, he has such a big place in Pittsburgh's heart now, especially after the Tree of Life Synagogue. You yes. know, you went to that one event at the point where he spoke with, I did. Miss, uh, with Mr. Rogers' wife. He did. So that was that was really cool. It was really cool. I um, actually made a little bit of a um, package in a Vosod on it and um, got to hear all of these different people that were speaking about this um, tragedy. But it was great that we can come together as a community. Absolutely. But stay tuned because after the break, find out how the Penguins fared after a big trade with the Florida Panthers. And coming up in technology, there are new emojis coming out and arrival to Apple's AirPods. We have all that and more coming up on Daybreak. Um. All right, we're ready. Oh, no, no, no. You are right here. Is the wind really necessary, guys? Do we need the wind. Okay. Fuck, huh? Uh-uh. You go take off of you. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, I need someone to make me laugh. Where's 
quiet. Quiet's always like, duh. I'm here. <laughs> Jealous? Get out of my way. Stop. Sports. On another season, the Penguins are just getting started with the regular season this week. Pioneer Sideline! The show that starts your Friday mornings has returned with both familiar and new faces. Daybreak hosts Taylor Fife and Delaney Bonas are bringing you the latest updates in Pittsburgh and Point Park news. We also have a variety of talent on our free segments. Whether it be singing, dancing, or indeed egg smashing. Start your mornings with us at Daybreak on UView at UView Television. Welcome back to Daybreak. I'm Lindsay Carson with your Pittsburgh Sports News. The Pittsburgh Penguins made a big trade with the Florida Panthers on Friday, February 1st. The Penguins received right wing Nick Bugstag and centerman Jared McCann, while the Panthers received centerman Derek Broussard and left wing Riley Shayan, along with two 2019 fourth round draft picks and one 2019 second excuse me, round pick. According to the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Penguins head coach Mike Sullivan believes the team is, quote, a better team, end quote, after this trade. However, the Penguins faced off against the Carolina Hurricanes on Tuesday, February 5th, and it did not go well for Pittsburgh. The Penguins were shut out with a final score of Hurricanes 4, Penguins 0. On the bright side, defenseman Justin Schultz is back to practicing with the team. Schultz has been out since October due to a fractured leg. Fans have been anticipating his return, and it looks like they don't have to wait too long until he's back out on the ice. If you want to see the Penguins play again, they will be traveling to the lightning capital of the country to take on the Tampa Bay Lightning this Saturday, February 9th. The puck will be dropping at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's all for sports, and now I'll send it over to Andrew Brinker with National News. Thanks, Lindsay. President Donald Trump delivered his highly anticipated State of the Union address to both houses of Congress Tuesday night after a showdown earlier this month with Democratic Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi over the government shutdown. According to the New York Times, the president focused his speech on a call for bipartisanship, saying, quote, we must reject the politics of revenge, resistance and retribution and embrace the boundless potential of cooperation, compromise and the common good. Meanwhile, the first two years of his presidency have been defined by the growing divide between Democrats and Republicans. And while his speech emphasized bipartisanship, members of Congress in the audience wore the divisiveness of the divide between the parties on their faces. Many congressional Republicans used the State of the Union to show their support of the president as they stood and cheered intermittently throughout his speech, while most Democrats did exactly the opposite. Speaker Pelosi used her camera position directly behind the president to openly display her disapproval of his stances on several key issues. Newly elected Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez sat through the majority of the president's speech and refused to applaud, also demonstrating her disapproval. Additionally, a large group of Democratic women wore white to the event, an allusion to the women's suffrage movement. However, the highlight of President Trump's address was perhaps his stand on immigration, as he once again labeled the current state of the southern border a national crisis and called for a border wall. The president's strong stance on his proposed wall leaves open the possibility of another government shutdown, as Trump has threatened to once again close the government if he is not granted funding for his wall. That's it this week for National News. Let's send it over to Haley Keyes with your timely tech news. Thanks, Andrew. Emoji has introduced a new line of disability-themed emojis that aim to help include more individuals on social media. The new characters include hearing aids, wheelchairs, prosthetic limbs, and guide dogs. BBC reports that these new characters were introduced after Apple received a complaint stating, quote, few exi existing emojis spoke to the experiences of those with disabilities. The British news site also stated that there is a total of 230 new emojis in the company's sixth update. 
because the new characters have appeared in 2019's official list, they will most likely be available to the public later in the year. Along with the disability emojis, there will also be a drop of blood, otter, ballet shoe, sorry, and a flamingo. And in other tech news, look out AirPods, there may be a new wireless earbud in town. In a newly leaked promotional image, Samsung advertised Galaxy Buds, an updated version of the company's 2016 Gear Icon X. In the image, the, ear in the, image, the earbuds are seen charging in a Galaxy S10+, Plus, causing excitement among fans. According to The Verge, Samsung is working to unify the company's lineup under the Galaxy brand. The image follows an announcement made by Samsung in September, but the release date is still unknown. That's all your timely tech news. Now let's see what's happening in the world of entertainment with Sarah Yobi. Thanks, Haley. These past few weeks have been busy ones for women in entertainment. Ariana Grande is releasing her, well, released her third single from her upcoming album, Thank You, Next. According to Billboard, the song Seven Rings has remained in the number one spot on Billboard's Hot 100 chart for two weeks. Her single, Thank You, Next, remains in the top ten at number six. And her fifth studio album came out yesterday, February 8th. Lady Gaga wrapped up the first leg of her Vegas residency, Enigma, this past weekend. The final show from this part of the residency follows her first performance of Shallow with a Star is Born co-star, Bradley Cooper. All updates on the Enigma residency can be found on the Gaga Vegas Instagram account. Gaga is still receiving recognition for her role as Allie in A Star is Born. Variety.com posted a full list of this year's Oscar nominees, and she is nominated for Best Lead Actress alongside Melissa McCarthy, Glenn Close, and more. Nominations for Best Picture this year include Black Panther, Black Klansman, A Star is Born, and more. The Oscars scheduled for February 24th remain hostless for the first time since 1989, according to BuzzFeed. The Oscars instead will have many celebrities as presenters throughout the program. The final part of the Unbreakable Saga, Glass, was released on January 18th. The Glass movie is so far the lowest grossing movie of the trilogy, and according to IMDb, has Glass has grossed over 100 million worldwide. Um, Split leads the three with over 278 million, followed by Unbreakable with 248 million. Rotten Tomatoes rated Glass a low 36% on the tomato meter. And finally, Kylie Jenner stirred up some pregnancy rumors this week by posting a photo of Instagram, to Instagram, excuse me, of her and Beau Travis Scott with the caption, quote, baby number two, unquote. The photo was posted before Travis's appearance at the Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show alongside Maroon 5 and Big Boy. However, nothing has been confirmed. And that's all in entertainment this week. Let's send it to Nick and Taylor. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to talk real quick, just real quick, because I know that you haven't seen it. The video of Lady Gaga performing Shallow was so good. And I have to admit, I have yet to see A Star is Born. It's been on my list, but Me I'm too. not a huge movie person. But I'm in love with that song. It's so good. She performs it so well live. And she's just an all-around great performer. Like you mentioned, the Super mm -hmm. Bowl. She performed two years ago at the Super Bowl and the halftime show, and she was phenomenal. So she I love can that for her. sing. She can act. She can dance. What can't she do, honestly? Exactly. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay tuned. After the break, we have an interview with Point Park's Black Student Union Vice President. I know just the trick. Bippity boppity boop. <laughs> Much better. Guys, to me or next scene, I'm outside of the Benedum Center right now. So in just a few moments, we're gonna go inside the Benedum Center to talk to Trevor Dion Nicholas, who plays the genie in Disney's Aladdin. I'm Samir Nafsi giving you the theatrical scoop for the Berg. Hey guys, so I'm now inside the Benedum Center with Trevor Dion Nicholas, who plays the genie in Disney's Aladdin.
Welcome back to Daybreak. Today we're joined by a very special guest. We've got Prim Green. She's a senior and she's the vice president of Black Student Union. Thank you so much for joining us here on Daybreak. Thank you for having me, both of you. I'm glad to be back because I was here last year for the same reason, so I'm happy to be back. Mm -hmm. So Prim, we want to know, what is the purpose of Point Park's Black Student Union here on campus? Well, the purpose of the Black Student Union in all, um, specifically on college campuses, is for just to create a community for not only black students, but for all students. I'm, I guess our main focus is the black students because sometimes they are very left out. Um, and it's just a safe place where we can voice our problems, issues, and solutions, really. Now, as a student at Point Park, I've noticed that you guys have held a lot of events throughout the mm -hmm. year. You have flyers everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere I turn, I see <laughs> one. It always puts a smile on my face. Can you tell us about some of the events that you've held this year so far? Yeah, so we always open up the year with our block party um, where we just kind of just, it's just a hangout situation um, on Point Park's campus and we invite other BSUs. We had Pitt, we had RMU, we had all these different BSUs together and it's just this fun party, really. Um, we always have our meetings first Monday of the month where you know our members just come and voice their opinions, we educate, uh, we learn about new things just in our community and just media in general too. Um, we have uh, our kickback with BSU, so that's normally just any type of event, um, just like random events, so like movie nights. Uh, most, most of them have been like movie nights uh, per se, but we've just kind of just it's all over the place, really. Um, what are some other events? Like we for Christmas, we did like our own little like Christmas party. We watched like The Grinch and mm -hmm. all these like cool yeah. things. So yeah. And speaking of holidays, can we also talk about the Martin Luther King event that mm -hmm. you had on campus mm -hmm. in the Playhouse? Yeah. So basically, last year we had a MLK event and it went very successful. We had it in the JVH. It was our first like MLK event. Um, last year's uh, BSU president, Anaya, was like, we need to make sure we're present um, on MLK Day because Point Park just recently made MLK Day um, a holiday where students are off. So we were like, okay, we're going to take this and we're going to make something positive out of it. So this year we got the Playhouse, which I was very surprised by. Uh, we got the Playhouse and we just had different acts of singing, dancing, monologues, things like that. Uh, so, yeah. Now, I want to know, this month is Black History mm -hmm. Month. Does the Black Student Union have anything special planned? Yeah, we have a few things planned. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Jada Pickett's Red Table Talk on Facebook. So we want to create our own Red Table Talk, but with black individuals around the world. So we have students from Jamaica, different parts of Africa, um, and their undergrad and grad students. And we're just going to have this open discussion about uh, what black is being like in different countries and real quick i just want to mm -hmm. ask how important is it for students to get involved not just on point parks campus but mm -hmm. you mentioned other black student unions mm -hmm. across uh, the city of pittsburgh how important is it for students to get involved with that and just to celebrate black, black history mm -hmm. month in general i think it's very important to get involved because like if we just kind of don't do anything it's like what what does that show for um it allows our vo voices to be heard. Um, and I think that a lot of our students are just kind of opening up because they don't know like if this is okay, is it socially okay? And then we're like, yeah, like your voice should be heard just as well as any of the other students on that campus. So. And finally, before we end, mm -hmm. how um, can students get involved with the Black Student Union and where can we find you on social media get to know about more of your events? Okay, so where you can find us, normally we always say like start off like coming to our meetings. It's always the first Monday of the month. Um, our, I want to say, please do not quote me on our uh, <laughs> social media, but if you type in Point Park BSU, it will pop up on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, and Instagram. So just type it in and it will pop up. It's like a black fist. It says black sitting in. Well, thank you very much, Prim, for coming on. We always enjoy having you here on Daybreak. Thank, thank you, you so guys. much, Prim. And after the break, host Brianna McCall and a special guest will be discussing recent celebrity sexual assault cases and their impact on society. You won't want to miss this week's edition of Breaking It Down with Bree. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. 
What's one word to describe cab? Welcoming. Community. Creative. Experiences. Family. Openness. Pineapple. The Campus Activities Board is a student-run organization that consists of seven different committees. Each focuses on event planning, marketing, and administrative activities. Join us in organizing the juiciest events on campus from late night bingo to festive dances to our team bonding meetings. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Point Park Cap or like us on Facebook at Campus Activities Board at Point Park University. Good evening and welcome to Newsnight. I'm Josh Krupp alongside Jess Patterchak. Defending his decision to kick out 15 Cuban diplomats from the United States. Thanks, Allison. Fitness on Demand has returned to Point Park. Residents fear that Mount Agung will have a repeat of 1963's eruption. Two-star NFL quarterbacks made the headlines this week after wrapping up. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. That's your news tonight. For Nick Tomarello, I'm Alex Grubbs. Have a great night. Welcome back to Daybreak. I'm Brianna McCall, and on this week's edition of Breaking It Down with Bree, I have guest Simone Hardy, who is a here, who is a guest, excuse me, uh, here for UView, and she is a student here on campus, and she has also appeared on UView's Entertainment On Point as a reporter. Welcome, Simone. So today's topic is going to be about the recent rape allegations against Chris Brown that happened back in January. So according to CNN, um, Brown was arrested in Paris for aggravated rape, and this happened around the third or second week in January. And the woman who accused him, she was left unidentified. She said that him and two other men took her into their hotel room, and she was, she was accusing them, excuse me, of drugging and raping her. Um, this woman, she happens to be a 23-year-old, and she said that she was drugged and that she accused Brown, but he was released with no charges. And also, it was stated that Brown admitted that this was false. You know, he went to social media, he made a post saying that he would never do this, this is like not a part of his morals, and that he, he also pleaded not guilty. Now, the situation is a little hard, because I know there has been cases like this before with like R. Kelly right. and Bill Cosby that has been like in the headlines recently. And a lot of these women are being drugged, so it's kind of hard to like believe what's happening, like because they're not really sure either. Like it's fuzzy, it's like hard to remember. So I think the problem with this is like, how do we trust these victims or like these women who are coming out with these stories against celebrities who have such a great support system? Like you have people supporting these celebrities who are being accused and like saying that's not true. Like they would never do anything like that. So right, right, and it's it's like these. Celebrities are held at such a high caliber that, like you said, like their supporters, their fans are like, he would never, you know, he's just, they're just doing this for his money. Right. And it's like, you really don't know what's going on behind his closed doors. You don't know R. Kelly personally. You don't know Chris Brown personally. And like he said, it's against his morals. He feels mm -hmm. like he was disrespected. And at the end of the day, it's really her word against his, his word against hers, and, you know, whatever the media, society decides to believe. Right, and I know that the woman who was left unidentified, she doesn't, her name is not out there for particular reasons because she has, she's afraid that people will come out, out to her, like threatening her or saying like she's wrong, she's in it for like the celebrities' money, their wealth. Right. And that's an issue with a lot of things. Um, the accuser is being accused of going after the celebrity's money. Right, right. Like it's turned around at the end yeah. of the day. Like, which is understandable for her to be unidentified because people are crazy, like people will probably end up finding where she lives, people right. will end up finding her Instagram page, you know, commenting all this bad stuff about her, calling her this and that, and it's like, if what she's saying is true, like she's already going through enough, mm -hmm. like you, she doesn't need to be um, slandered, she doesn't need to be threatened, mm -hmm. and it's like, I understand why she would be a Jane Doe, why she yeah. would be, you know, like hidden and like kinda away from the media. In this case, I'm a little skeptical about it because there's not a lot of information. Like, I didn't see anything that said there was a rape kit done. Right. Um, the, they just did like a little questionnaire on the people who were accused and that was it. And since they pleaded guilty, they were set free, no charges. So it's kind of hard to know how the situation is really gonna play out. They say they're gonna do further investigation, but 
we don't know how that's gonna go and I just hope like with this system they come up with a way to trust these victims and give them that support that they need because honestly it's kind of like the blame gets put on the victim mm -hmm. because they're always being questioned like well what makes you think this happened just because you woke up in a hotel room alone as she stated so I think it's a tough situation. It's kind of like a little seesaw. You don't really know. Mm -hmm. Is the person who's being accused wrong or is the accuser wrong for accusing? Yeah, no. And it's like, this is one of the reasons why a lot of females or not even just females, like a lot of rape victims, sexual assault victims are really scared to say anything because it's like, oh, you're lying. Right. Oh, like, did that really happen? And it's like, well, this is something that's in, like, it might be embarrassing, might be something that's really like to heart to some people. And it's like... I had this confidence to share it with you and you don't believe me and it's right. like it's kind of it's really hard for some, a lot of people to come out to to say what's really going on with them right and I don't know if you've seen but the R. Kelly docuseries that was produced by Lifetime they were saying that the victims weren't coming out because nobody trusted them but once one came out another and then another and another so I think that's just the issue that we just need to trust these victims, give them the support they need, right. and you know things will go better from there. And then maybe it won't be that hard for victims to come out. Yeah. Also, it's very scary, like just like like thinking on the other side mm -hmm. to be accused of rape because yeah. it's like that's jail time, and it's right. like being in jail. I, like I know like when people in prison hear about things you've done, like mm. it's scary to think of what they'll do to you when you're in there, right. like. Being accused of rape is very, very serious. So mm -hmm. it's just why I wonder a lot of times why people falsely accuse because that's very, very serious. And yeah. it's just something that you don't really want to play with with someone's yeah. life. Thank you, Simone. Here at Daybreak, we want everyone out there to know that you can get help if you find yourself in a situation like this. If you need help, Pittsburgh has resources such as Pittsburgh Action Against Rape. You can visit their site at paar.net. Stay with us, Daybreak. We will be back after the break with this week's Ray of Sunshine. The United Student Government at Point Park University, working since the 1970s to solve the issues that matter to you. What concerns do you have about the university, student life, safety, food service. Send us an email to studentconcerns at pointpark.edu or stop by our office on the seventh floor of the Student Center. You can also attend our weekly open meetings on Mondays at 315. Follow us on social media at USG underscore PPU for more. The United Student Government. By the students. For the students. The Point Park Sports Network, bringing you live coverage of Pioneer Athletics on Stretch Internet, the home of the River States Conference and the NAIA. Subscribe today for complete access to the Point Park volleyball, baseball, basketball, and soccer teams. Watch live and on-demand broadcasts and don't miss a minute of Point Park Athletics. Head to pointparksports.com slash live for broadcast listings. The Point Park Sports Network, your streaming home for Point Park Athletics. Three, two, one. Please visit our website. Please, it's a nice website. Please visit our website. Please. If you have ever watched television, whether accidentally or on purpose, you view is for you. Welcome back to Daybreak. Before we say goodbye, we would like to share with you this week's Ray of Sunshine. For those who may not be familiar with Daybreak's Ray of Sunshine segment, it is our way of helping you start your morning with a smile with an inspirational quote. That's right, and I chose today's quote. It is by African-American author and poet Maya Angelou, and it reads, quote, You can only become accomplished at something you love. Don't make money your goal. Instead, pursue the things you love doing and then do them so well that people can't take their eyes off you. I think that quote relates to us so much being in, um, you know, learning broadcasting, being in mm -hmm. this business. You really do have to love it because, right. you know, our job in the future, we're going to be doing everything, writing scripts, shooting our own footage, doing our own interviews. Right. So I think, you know, in this career, you have to love what you're doing. And I agree because we do so many different things. Like, not a lot of people will see that. They'll only see what is being shown on the camera. Mm -hmm. But we, like you said, we write, we edit, we even produce, we shoot our own stuff. And it may be a lot of work, it may be stressful, but we, if we love it, it'll be worth it. Absolutely. And even what it says on there about 
you know, everyone having their eyes on you. As a broadcaster, that's literally <laughs> it, taking it in a literal sense. Mm. All eyes are on us, and if we don't love what we do and we're in this business, it's going to show on our face. We're right. not actors, you know? Yeah. So I know that I speak for myself, and I believe the two of you when I say that we all love what we do, and we're so thankful to have gotten this opportunity to host Daybreak and just yes. be on UView shows. Yeah. And that's it for Daybreak this week. Thank you both. I'm your host, Nick Tamarello. I'm your host, Taylor Spirito. And I'm your host, Brianna McCall. Tune in next week for the news you need. And don't forget to like and follow Daybreak on Facebook at Daybreak on UView. And be sure to check out the full episode and all of our shows from UView at uview.pointpark.edu. Have a great week, everyone.